Hi everybody, today we're going to be taking a look at Beat Repeat. So Beat Repeat is a really cool delay type uh, effect that's built into Ableton, uh, but it's a little bit different than your typical delay, and it can add some really cool randomization to your live performances uh, or in the studio when you're trying to come up with uh, variations on beats to keep things sounding fresh. So let's take a look at how I've applied Beat Repeat in this uh, little track. I've got three rhythm tracks here and I've used Beat Repeat on each of them. So let's listen to how it affected this very first one. First, without Beat Repeat, it sounds like this. Then with So it just added a little bit of uh, character to this otherwise pretty static loop. All right, uh, so let's start going through and uh, looking at how Beat Repeat works. When we drag Beat Repeat in, these are the settings we'll get. And uh, we'll begin here with the interval setting. The interval uh, setting decides well, how, how often Beat Repeat captures new material and begins repeating it. Uh, right now we've got it set at one bar, but we can go down as low as a 30 second note or as high as four bars. Uh, let's hear what it sounds like at one bar. So that's every one bar it does the repetition. If we set it to two bars, it'll do it every two bars. We can set it lower as well, every eighth note. Uh, but let's keep it at one bar for now. Next we've got the offset. Offset decides uh, how far off from the first beat the, the grid is. So if we turn it up to four sixteenths, that puts it one beat off of the front. If we turn it up eight, it'll be two beats off, which would be the third beat. Next is gate, which decides uh, the total length of all the repetitions. Right now we've got it seven sixteenth notes. Let's bring it to just four, so it lasts one beat. We can double that. And now it lasts two beats. Uh, and then to further um, uh, customize it, we need to use the grid value. And the grid value decides how many divisions are in the yellow part you see up here. So if we, we had it, I think it's 16. Let's bring this back down to one beat to make it more uh, manageable. So you can see, you can come up with a lot of different kind of effects with that. You can go anywhere from a rhythmic thing to uh, those very low values like 1, 2, 56 and, and 1, 1, 28th. And those are more kind of like a glitch type uh, sonic artifact, I suppose. Um, so really, these are probably the most important. These four interval, offset, gate, and grid are the four most important parameters for the plugin. But we do have several more. Uh, two parameters we have that we can use to uh, add some, some randomization to our sound are chance and variation. Chance, it basically decides uh, how likely it is that this plugin is going to uh, behave, uh, make an effect. If we've got it at 100%, it will always, always do uh, what it's being told to do. If we set it to zero, it will never do that. Anywhere in between, and you've got a percentage of likelihood, 50%, and it's a coin toss. Uh, so for live performance, you might want to set it at a percentage and have a really cool random effect. But I think in the studio, uh, most of the time you're basically going to have it at either zero if you're using it as uh, a push effect. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute or 100%. All 
Uh, variation, on the other hand, varies the grid value. So let's say we've got the grid set to uh, 16th notes, but we want to add some randomization of that. So we can bump the variation up to affect that. Let's bump it all the way up and hear what it sounds like. So you can hear each time it's randomizing it. And we've also got variation modes. Right now it's set to trigger. And as we can read uh, over in the corner, trigger mode creates variations of the grid when repetitions are triggered. We've also got uh, quarter, eighth, and sixteenth modes, which trigger the variations in regular intervals. And then we've got auto mode, which is really random. And it just uh, applies a new random variation after each repetition. We can further customize this variation by uh, selecting the no triplets uh, button. If you activate this button, then it makes sure that the grid does not include any triplet values. Um, depending on the type of music you're working on, you may or may not want this. Next up, we've got our pitch controls. So these are really fun. I think these add a lot of color to the, the plugin. The first one just pitches down all the way to an octave down uh, the affected repetition. So let's hear what this sounds like. So you can do some cool sound design stuff uh, with that. You can also use pitch decay, and pitch decay tapers the pitch curve, uh, so each slice will play lower. I think this works best on lower values like maybe 24 or let's do 32, and let's just turn this all the way up. So that adds a really cool effect as well. Uh, next over here, we've got our filter. Let's bring this back up a little bit. And the filter will just filter the effect uh, in this combined high pass, low pass uh, filter. So let's say we just want the mid range of it or the low or the high. So that might be something fun also to uh, play with, you know, have on a controller or maybe an LFO. Uh, next we've got our, our output modes. Right now it's set to mix, which means we're mixing the original signal and the repetitions. But we can also use insert mode, which uh, mutes the original whenever the uh, repetitions are playing. So if we do that. Sounds a little funny whenever you've got the filter on, but uh, there, there may be some applications for this. Uh, we've also got gate mode, which only plays the repetitions. And this mode is probably most useful on an, uh, a return track, which again, I'll show you in a second. Uh, we've got a couple more. We've got the output volume, which sets the volume of the repetitions uh, going out. And we've also got decay, which, uh, if you look at the visual representation of what's going on up here, the decay becomes pretty apparent. It just slowly decays the volume of the repetitions. So if we set it, let's say to 40% or so, then it'll sound like this. So that can create some really cool effects. And actually, in my original instance here, I had uh, used that a little bit. All right, uh, so that's almost everything, but we've got one more uh, parameter, which is this repeat button. We didn't really talk about this. And the reason is that I was waiting, uh, saving it for when we move over to this return track. So let's unmute everything, but mute our instruments. So we've just got the rhythm playing. So that's pretty good and we've got uh, the beat repeats working on each individual track to add some randomization. But let's say I want like a uh, kind of fill or uh, break uh, in, in the rhythm while I'm playing live. Well I could have this beat repeat send. 
and I've got the chance set to zero. So it will never randomly trigger, but I can manually uh, make it trigger using the repeat button. And uh, when you've got the repeat set, then the, the interval, the offset, the chance, the gate controls, they have no effect at all. Uh, so you're just depending on the, the grid variation, pitch, and the filter. So let's hear how this sounds. So depending on when you trigger it, you can really get some uh, some cool effects and kind of some chaos in your rhythm. All right, well anyway, that's about it for uh, this plugin, but if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. If you have any questions or comments about, uh, or any suggestions about how to improve these videos, please let me know. I'm always trying to make them uh, better and more succinct. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this, and next week we'll be taking a look at Cabinet, which is kind of the sibling program uh, plugin to AMP, which we already talked about. So please check back for that one. All right, thanks.